Hi everybody, it's Curious Raven with another true crime story. Today, this one will be about Philip Markov. He is also known as the Craigslist Killer. I remember when this happened and everyone was freaking out and did not want to buy things off of Craigslist. Now, I know all of you probably know what Craigslist is, but just in case, there are some younger watchers. Craigslist is a website that you can sell and buy things. You can offer services as in a jobs, and you can actually list free things on there. And how it works is you put your ad out, and then people will reply to you. And then you mainly accept their offer and decide you want to meet. So you can get the money, and then they can come get the product, vice versa. This Craigslist killer, the reason why he was marked that was he would put up fake ads, and girls would answer to them, and he would have them meet him at a hotel room. They thought that they were safe, but unfortunately, they were not. Let's talk about Philip Markoff first. He was born in 1986 in New York. He was in his second year of medical school in Boston. He found his victims through exotic ads on Craigslist. He was engaged to a woman named Megan McAllister. Everyone talked about how Philip was a very good student, straight A guy, popular in high school, very, very smart. And it was odd that he had this dark side to him. He hid it very well. His fiance was blindsided by everything and I just, I feel for her. I cannot believe that she was engaged to this monster. It all starts April 10th, 2009, when Trisha Leffler was held up at gunpoint in the Weston Hotel four days after he put up his first ad. Trisha Leffler got away, but unfortunately for his next victim, Julissa Brisman, she was actually found murdered in her doorway at Marriott Marriott Compley Palace. It was said that she answered an ad from a man named Andy, and they talked through email and phone. Now, on April 16th, his next victim was Cynthia Miller. She was attacked at a Holiday Express. On surveillance from that hotel, they compared it to the surveillance of the murder of Julissa, and they found out that it was the same man that attacked both of these women. Investigators ended up tracing the emails from this Andy guy to a guy named Philip. Police followed Philip for a while, and when he would touch things, especially like in a grocery store, when he was shopping and he would touch stuff and put it back, they would go and they would take fingerprints off of those items that he touched. On April 20th, 10 days later, police arrested Philip during a traffic stop. He was arrested because his fingerprints matched. He was at those crime scenes of the hotels. The fingerprints that they pulled from the weapons and, and from just random things in the hotel rooms to those two to three victims that were targeted. What was damning for him, the evidence, was when they actually did a search of Philip Markov's apartment. This is what they found. The gun and a hollowed out med book. So when he shot Julissa, it was the exact same bullets and came from that gun. Then they found plastic zip ties that were used on the victims. The plastic zip ties matched up. And then the duct tape, the same duct tape was used as well. They found several unused cell phones that were purchased in February two months prior, so to me, he was planning on killing and doing something to his victims. Premeditated, that's the word. Under his mattress, the bed that he slept with his fiance, they found a sock with 16 pairs of panties. They found two panties per victim, you know, the three girls, and that's only six pair. They have no clue how long he's been doing this, so he could have had so many more victims. 
then they then they know on april 21st he was charged with the murder of Jalissa. he had no bail and on april 23rd philip tried to kill himself by hanging himself with his shoelaces in his prison cell he was placed on suicide watch on a phone call philip told his estranged brother to forget about him not to worry about him they found out that philip was into bdsm and they found that he was on his phone records was going on two porn sites one of them was transvestional site McAllister, the fiance, broke up with Philip. I do not blame her. That is heartbreaking. And all he could say to her was, I'm sorry. And that's it. Philip tried to kill himself again with a sharp spoon, but he failed. A year later, August 15, 2010, still awaiting trial, Philip did succeed in killing himself. He wrote in blood, Megan and Pocket above the door. Philip cut major arteries in his legs and ankles, also neck. Then he put a plastic bag over his head and he shoved toilet paper down his throat so they could not resuscitate him. He lay down on his bed and then died. In September 16th, 2010, they filed a Noel Prosky. I think that's how you say it. I am not sure, y'all. But this meant that they dismissed the charges against Philip. I mean, he was dead. He never went to trial. So, you know, they knew he was guilty. They also found Jalissa's blood on his shoes that Philip was wearing when they arrested him. And this monster, Philip, at the end, he did deny all allegations against him. Okay, y'all. I want to talk about this. This happened in 2009. And I was in my 20s, so it was all over the news, and people were freaked out about buying stuff from Craigslist. You have to be wary of people. Um, don't meet at your house. Meet at a really public place, like a grocery store, or a restaurant, or a busy parking lot, or, you know, and during the day, not at night. That's bad. But this guy, when I first heard about it way back when, I thought it was a like a scary story or something. I didn't, until I was a little older, I really believed, wow, there is really a Craigslist killer. The reason why he was called that is because that's how he would lure his victims is from Craigslist with exotic ads. Um, to me, exotic probably means, you know, this was back when the personal ads were still available where you could say guy meets girl or before Tinder and um, Grindr was available for people to hook up so they would put an ad out in craigslist and i'm guessing that's what they mean by exotic especially that you should be safe not just randomly meet a stranger in your hotel room that is just dumb and in 2009 that wasn't that long ago it wasn't like in the 80s there weren't that many killers around you know that but these days in the 2000s yes i'm just mad mad that these women could be blindsided by this evil person to do that to them and it breaks my heart and it's not just their fault it's his fault too he's disgusting but you never know somebody i meant he was about to get married and he seemed like a guy and he had his head on his shoulders and all of a sudden he's a killer sorry this video is not that long today but this is the case that i wanted to touch on uh recently i am researching the Ted Bundy case. So, I don't want to make promises, but I think next Friday will be about the Ted Bundy murders. And that man was crazy. But anywho, I'm going to end this video, and I want y'all to have a happy new year. Today is New Year's Day. I love y'all very, very much. Please go like and subscribe to my channel. I do have a Patreon now. And there's different tiers, and a different tier you know, it starts at $3 to help with the channel and you get some really cool stuff. So the link will be in the, the video. I am calling it my Corvus Corex Flock. So if you want to be a member of this family and flock, why don't you go check it out? 
Also, down below, I will have my merchandise store. Some really cool items over there. You can show off your Curious Raven logo on t-shirts or we got cell phone cases, t-shirts, little drawstring backpacks. We have hoodies, long sleeve shirts, just a lot of stuff over there. Go head over to Spreadshirt and see if anything catches your eye. But if not, I still love you. You help me with the channel just watching me and just liking my videos. So thank you so much. I will see y'all next Friday. Until then, remember, it's scary out there.